It was the 15th of September 1985. They had got the contact with the innovator of something that was tilting and rotating. When I saw it on an uh, excavator, and I saw how the bucket can rotate, well, this was a little uh, shock for me. Well, that must be useful. It, this must be something. It must be on every excavator. From that date, I lived with this product. The world of digging has changed forever. It didn't happen following an executive decision by a large corporation. It happened here in the region of Joplin in northern Sweden because of one man's relentless pursuit of technical perfection. His name is Stieg Engström. My father died when I was uh, five years old. My brother was mm, a little bit older, so he was already left. So it, it was m me and my mother, more or less, in the whole world. It's so totally out in the forest, totally alone. You have no neighbors, I have no friends in my same age. For me, it was what I wanted. I want to have it like that, because I have a lot of time with myself and with my ideas. I was mainly playing with Lego. Lego was really, really big for me. And it was everything from uh, water power stations, helicopters, uh, logging machines, uh, excavators, uh, everything. I think I was 10 years old when I decided what to do later. When I came to, to school, I found a lot of uh, Interesting things also there. Uh, trigonometry, for example, maybe not religions or maybe not history, but mathematics, physicals, chemistry, I love that, that part of it, the science part of it. I knew I should be in an environment with a mechanical industry, that's for sure. Upon graduating college with a degree in technical engineering, Steve got his first job at a company called Noreco as technical designer. That's where his life changed. It was the 15th of September 1985 in Umeå. I was just new on the, on the, on the company up there uh, to working with something else, but they had got the contact with the innovator of something that was tilting and rotating. When I saw it on an uh, excavator, and I saw how the bucket can rotate, well, this was a little uh, shock for me. Well, that must be useful. And everyone who saw it said the same thing. It, this must be something. It must be on every excavator. From that date, I lived with this product. A tilt rotator has the same function for an excavator as a wrist has for the human arm. In the last two decades, it's changed the world of digging in Northern Europe. Today, it's almost mandatory to have a tilt rotator to get an excavator job in this part of the world. The original inventor of the tilt rotator was another Swede by the name of Ulf Holmdahl. Det var en entreprenör som som eh, önskade att man skulle kunna vrida skopan och tippa den och det här. Jag började 79 och fick fram den eh, till eh, 85. Ritningar fanns aldrig. 
Eh, jag byggde ja, rakt igenom huvudet hela tiden hur, hur jag ansåg att det skulle se ut för att kunna få detta här. Så det utvecklades ju hela tiden i, i bakhuvudet. Och, och jag tycker att jag fick till en, en, en rolig och bra produkt. Ulf applied and received a patent for his invention. However, he didn't have the capacity to develop the tilt rotator himself. Ulf made an agreement with Noreco, an industrial company in northern Sweden. Så, när jag kom upp då så fanns Stig Engström där. Han var, jag tror att han var helt nyexaminerad konstruktör. Han tog tag i att det här gjorde ritningar och, och allting sånt. För det fanns ju inte. Så de, de fortsatte ju att utveckla och, och det har ju blivit en jäkligt snygg sån här tillskottator. We created the tooth and a new setup how it should look like. I started from the beginning and uh, it was paper and pen. It was uh, old fashioned style to make it. So I started with drawings and a lot of done did a lot of uh, mistakes myself of course because I didn't know what to do exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, we learned and uh, we, we succeeded with that. So in 1989 uh, we produced 264 units. The units were far from perfect. There were a lot of errors in the technical design. There were a lot of function failures and warranty issues. Unfortunately, I have not my economical background and the, the owner of the company had not better than me. So it was a totally chaos. So when we delivered the most, we also lost the most my money. So in 1990, I said, this is totally impossible. We have too much problems, we have too much loan, everything is a problem and at that time also the Nordic bank market totally dropped. I told the owner that I want to leave. I believe in the product but I don't believe in this setup, we need to do something. And from 1990 I started my own company called Engcon, Engstrom Construction. Stieg had spent five years developing the tilt rotator. It was, from a technical perspective, a completely different product than the one Ulf Homdahl had invented. After a while, Noreco went bankrupt. Stieg decided to give the tilt rotator a new chance. Welcome to Enkon Lidfuvari, the first factor of Enkon. This is where it started, all of it. I have a working area there. It was a drilling machine or something. We had always the problems with electrics because it was, the fuses was too weak. This crane, I built it myself from material I found out here and put it in place. So, so I remember it quite well. A lifting device to help me with the heavy things. Of course, when I started the company, I knew that Ulf Holmdahl was the owner of a patent. I have some uh, consultants to help me with that and check into the patents if it was a problem for me with the design I have uh, taken. And of course, this is what I feel, but I have no idea what Ulf Holmdahl is. And I have not met him for 30 years, so I have no idea what he thinks today, if, it's, uh, if I've stolen it or not. Det vi har sålt om de här, alltså 30, måste det gamla är för 30, men mer än hälften av dem gick ut i den 26. At Noreco, Stig had gotten to know a technical designer by the name of Shell Hugberg. Stig got him on board on Incon to develop a new and better tilt rotator. När eh, vi skulle konstruera Incons variant av det här, då, då, då blev det en helt ny lösning så att säga. Att vi startade om med en kom, då fick man egentligen 
ett vitt papper och, och börja med. Så det var, det var nog en stor orsak till varför vi, vi kunde ta så pass radikala grepp som vi gjorde i början. But now I'm so wise. I know I, I'm so I know so much about this now, so I can take some more big circles. I want to do try something more, new things. And unfortunately, I did the same mistake more or less one more time. I take too much new things into this concept, and I got a lot of problems again. I was too brave to put too much new things out to the market, and it was not tried. It was not tested. My customer got a lot of problems and they don't want to pay me and then they have also again a lot of debts and a lot of problems with that, with the economical side. It was the worst. The third important person in the early days of Encon was Haken Week. The Finn joined Encon as head of sales. Och det här han där börjar ju nog bli nästa mordhot. För det här funkar ju inte. inte. Det var ju typ 60 000 kronor per aggregat. Och pressade ut 10 stycken är ju 600 000. Och pressade ut 31,8 miljoner och allt åt helvete. Så. We have a lot of uh, collectors coming in, they want the money. Someone was coming up from south of Sweden to kill me. They had to do something. I found a solution. And the solution was at that time that I have produced one, I've sold one. I also got the money for one unit. And then the other customer, I promised him for three, four times that, well, on Monday it's ready to deliver to you. On next Monday it's probably finished. And I'm sure it will be ready next Monday and so on. And after three or four times the customer seems to have a problem with the patient. So, well, he had some really nasty words in the telephone and promised me to come here and do something. So I said, now I have to find out a good solution. And the quickest, best solution was to take the other customer's unit and send it to him. And that's happened twice. <laughs> <laughs> My debt was a half million Swedish crowns, more or less exactly in July 1993. And that was the deepest point I've ever been. It was really close to a bankruptcy for my company. It had almost been eight years since the tilt rotator came into Stieg's life. It was still not functioning the way he wanted, and he was deeply in debt. Most people would have given up. What drives some people to continue? When common sense says something else, what makes some entrepreneurs extraordinarily successful when most are not? When you come to a corner, when you have a knife against your throat, you are really, really creative. And uh, well, I think that's one side of me. I need to be really under hard pressure before I can do the best solutions and be more creative. So, well, it's, it's good and bad things, but definitely it was a hard time for me, it's more like uh, I can't tell myself or the rest of the society around me that I have failed. I, I need to go further, and this, so I knew that I, I can better than this. During '93, uh, I succeeded to get some more financial partners coming in. There are special two from this area who can help me uh, together with the bank as, because I was still had a good relation with the bank. And together we, I succeeded to get a new loan for about one million Swedish crowns. So I sold the old problems and I also have the possibility now together with my friend, the technical consult in, in Umeå to start all over again. And at that time I take three steps back and started with something that already been tested. Kan de hjälpa stå mot teoretiskt? Jo, det är det. 
Men får du glappen så att de verkligen kan få dem också? Typ? Ja, men motorn, han, han tar ju igen glappen. Ja, han drar ju. Ja. Så det tror jag, det tror jag nog. Incon barely survived in the summer of 1993. But by taking a step back with the design and technical solution to something they knew worked, they reached a turning point. Jag sa, nu är det fel hos oss om vi inte klarar det här. Sen Kjell har ritat EC20. Produkten är bra, vi kan marknaden, vi känner kunder. Nu är det upp till oss. Sweden was going through one of the worst recessions in modern history in the mid-1990s. The building construction sector was almost at a standstill. But Stig, Haken and Shell were tenacious. Slowly the breakdowns and warranty issues decreased. Step by step, one customer at a time, Incon started to grow. Vi räknade baklänges att vi skulle måste få ut 60 stycken året för att klara livhanken. Och det blev det ju, det blev ju 60 och följande år var det väl 120 och så blev det 240 och sen samma system. Du måste ju vara nåbar om du ska klara dig framåt i en bransch. Och, och för min del så var ju telefonen påkopplad dygnet om 24 timmar i dygnet. Och, och konkurrenterna stängde telefonväxeln klockan fyra. Det är ju väldigt bra och tacksamt faktiskt. Så. In four years, between 1993 and 1997, Encon went from fighting bankruptcy to a solid company in northern Sweden. Nej, men som sagt, jag tror det var här vi har kartan över, över Norden. Och alltid då vi sålde en rot och till, då satt vi en knopp norr. Var den EC10, då var den gul, var den 20, då var den röd och en 30 kanske. It was still hard work with every sale. Nothing came easy. That too was about to change. It was 1998 and it was really, really a quick change because what's happening was we were struggling, struggling and convincing customer that you have to buy something, you have to buy something. And all of a sudden, the first customer asked us, they called us, they put a telefax and it was at that time, I need one because on Monday I'm out of job if I don't have a titrator. So something happened just overnight. And then it came from something we were pushing out to something the customer needed. And that was just overnight. It was so changed so rapidly. Rotator only requires a machine with one. In con tilt rotators. I wouldn't trade it for anything now. Vinnaren är Stig Engström, Encom AB. In the last 20 years, Encon had grown to making over 100 million euros annually with offices in nine countries. Though successful today, the potential for Encon is still enormous. Only about 2% of the world's excavators are equipped with a tilt rotator. Incon is still privately owned. Stieg has a controlling stake in the company. But since 2012, Christer Blumgren is the CEO of Incon and he runs the day-to-day -day operations. Stig is still very involved in Encon. Um, he and I talk a lot about the big decisions we're going to make and what the focus will be. Um, so marketing and especially R&D is uh, where he's still very, very involved. Then uh, new products, new ideas, uh, he's still very involved in that. But uh, then I'm running more like the daily business, so it's probably more in, in the strategic CV, way. CV. For the two six. Or two or six. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have to decide who will pay. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, we are just started our journey. We we believe that we will be 2025. We will double our revenue. Uh, we need to uh, work with 
with the market because the, it's going to be big changes in the upcoming market and we need to change the world of digging. We need to get the Europeans to understand the benefits of the tilt rotator. We need uh, to get the people in America to understand it. Um, it will be a big challenge the upcoming 10 to 20 years for us to to follow and stay in, in the lead of the pack. We, we are the leader right now and want to stay there as the world well, leader regarding uh, power tools and uh, tilt rotator stuff. Ulf Homdahl spent over five years inventing the first tilt rotator. Ulf's invention has changed the world of digging. But since the late 1980s, long before Encon became successful, Stieg and Ulf have had no contact. Der håller ju Stig. Herregud, han är så lik. Ulf Holmdahl, det var sannoliken inte igår. Hej du, hej du! Fan vad längs. Här var gammen. Hur är det? Jo. Är det 30 år sedan eller något då? Ja, det, det är säkert. Ja, det måste vara. Ja. Jag känner ju faktiskt igen dig. Ja, 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 ja. Känner igen dig också. Ja, 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 jag känner igen dig. Ändå att det är 30 år sedan. Ja, det är helt otroligt då. Ja, det är... Jag får ju det för första gången och sen har det varit med. Så det... Ja, egentligen. Det, det ändras ju livet totalt. Från den dagen har ni liksom håller på med någon Det var bara det Du har bara hållit på med detta, ja. ja. Sen den dagen. Jag har inte tänkt på någon annan sen den dagen faktiskt. Det, det förstår jag. Det det förstår jag. Eftersom du har byggt upp allt ja, detta. Ja, det är... Ska vi ta en varm och titta vad vi håller på med? Så ja, det är, se det, ändå är, här, så det, är det som är det intressanta. Ja, jag förstår det. Ja, ja. Vad som har hänt. Varsågod. Vi har fått in. Ja. Ja. Här var det grejer du. Det här finns ett prylar på. Alla enda mål. Alla. Tycken och smak. Här står de. Här står de, ja. Det är där de ser ut. Ja. De här de är testade och klara. Varje, som är en lina för varje modell. Vi har ju sju, åtta storlekar i princip. Ja, ja. Så byggs de längs den här banan när de plockar upp grejerna eftersom. Det här, är, det här är vad vi kallar för gula hjärtat. Då. Det här är som hjärtat i hela snurran. Och då bygger vi ihop det i det här huset. Och så går vi upp till nästa hus och där vi gör dem färdiga. Så ja. det så det. Och tanken är också att det här ska skickas då till Polen. Och det görs redan idag till fabriken där. Och även till USA eller Asien. Då. Liksom I containerna med det där. Och så kan man sätta på fästen på plats. Och så här långt är det ju lika. Det är standard så här långt. Ja, ja, ja. Men upp och ner det blir lite olika vilka länder och vilka kunder det är. Ja, här är det mycket att se. Vi har väl ett par bilar per dag som kommer och hämtar dem. Vi gör ju 130 i veckan ungefär, så det blir några stycken per dag då. Det är 25. Alltså så många? Ja. Det var inte Nej, vi har ju 6 000 i fjol. Det är mycket nyheter. Ja, det är mycket som inte på det här området. Och mer är på gång. Det är liksom en hejd. The goal is of course not uh, to survive anymore. I think I'm happy that I'm not needed to go to that type of goals anymore. Uh, but to be better, find new products coming in that can do something more, to be unique on the market. We're not just following the others, we have something new. And that's a really big force. Du kommer ihåg jag hade inga ritningar. Nej, ja, du hade ju några grejer med Några skisser. Skisser, ja, ja. Det var det jag första jag fick börja med dina ritningar och börja gå igenom allihop. <laughs> det var ju du som började. Det är inte min idé, absolut inte. Det var bara, bara tag över och förvaltat den på något sätt. Du har förvaltat den mycket väl. Ja. ja. Men vad jag har förstått på statistiken så har du ökat din omsättning hur mycket som helst. Ja, det passerar miljarden nu. Ja. Det gäller att ha satsat på rätt sak. Har man satsat, man spelar ingen roll hur mycket du arbetar om du håller på med fel sak. Då blir det ingenting kvar i alla fall. Så man måste ju ha tur också. Ja. Och, och timing. 
Det var en jävla ska ju få träffa dig. Ja, verkligen. Jag har faktiskt funderat på det här jättelänge. Many days you ask yourself, why are you doing this? What is the reason? What is the, the diagnosis? Why are you continue like this? And, but uh, also when you come to a point where you want to prove for yourself that you can do it and everything goes in the wrong way, you get even more tricky that you have to continue. You have, because I, I can't, for myself and for all the rest, of, I, I can't uh, show them that, well, I didn't do it. I couldn't do it. I didn't make it. Uh, now that's not me. Uh, I want, I want to compete, I want to win. I'm a, I'm a winner in that case. Mm-hmm.